The Devil's Next Move, Part 6. So I ended Part 5, and I'll repeat it again. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 16. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Now Paul is quoting from Isaiah 40, verse 13. Who hath directed the Spirit of the Lord, or being his counselor, has taught him. We have the mind of Christ. By that, Paul means that aided by the Holy Spirit, believers have been given access to the thoughts of Christ. We have been given the ability to see what is spiritual and to think what Christ Jesus thinks. Romans 12.2 Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Philippians 2.5 Have this mind among yourself, which is yours in Christ Jesus. 1 Peter 1.13 Therefore, preparing your minds for action, and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So Philippians 2, 5, and I'll read a little bit starting right there. Have this mind among yourself, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality, with a with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. Jesus Christ. Romans 8, 9. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If, in fact, the Spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. I, I'm going to do a whole... I don't know how to say how profound this is. The um, I, I sleep most of the time, right? I have bone cancer, which means, fortunately for me, I spend the majority of my time sleeping. But I, I can't, I cannot, you know, last night I went to a backyard barbecue and was infuriated. I left there looking like a happy person. And all I could do is take it to Holy Spirit and say, show me what the heck just happened and what's going to go on and what are my friends doomed for. And this is the best, Romans 8, 9, I, it was, it was, you know, I mean, I've been sleeping for the last, I don't know, 12, 15 hours now, but it was on this right here. I'll get to another video on that one. 1 John 2, 6. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. Now, right there's a scary thought. Just, just stop, all right, every single day, no matter what you're going through, no matter what is happening in your life. Just stop and think, would I rather be in my position right now or would I rather be walking in the way of Christ on the way up that hill as he was carrying his cross up that hill? I, I, I don't, I'm, yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. Colossians 3, 2. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. Again, let it go. Whatever you're going through, whatever is happening, uh, it, it is promised to us, biblically speaking, right? It is promised to us it will get worse. Whatever is happening right now, it will get worse by a million times, all right? So be glad. Whatever you're going through right now, be glad because it's not a million times worse. That may sound like an exaggeration. It's not. It's simply not. Right now, you're not walking up a hill getting ready 
to be crucified on a cross. And right now, whatever you have done, whatever evil, whatever sin, whatever it is, you absolutely have the ability to drop to your knees, repent, and sin no more. And do not believe what the church is telling you, once saved, always saved. Jesus himself said to the woman at the well, stop what you're doing, repent, and don't do it ever again. So no, not once saved, always saved. Don't think because you're baptized, you're going to end up in heaven. That's not the deal. That's not the case. That's not how salvation works. Salvation means that you you repent of your Laodicean ways. I can't even, until your heart is broken in half because you realize you've lived your entire life lukewarm as a Laodicean dabbling in the new age until your heart is broken in half and you want nothing to do with Laodicean, with the pathetic, the pathetic bread and circus called church and religion until your heart is broken in half because of all of the astrology, right, charts and sessions you had done and the psychic sessions and the palm reading and the profanity, whether you washed it or partook in it, whatever it is, whatever it is, until, until your heart breaks in half because you were a lukewarm Laodicean and called yourself a Christian or worse, called yourself spiritual, you are full of high vibrations, love and light, Unless your heart breaks, you're never going to understand this. The Holy Spirit is not going to be able to get in through that that what that leathery, tough surface that you've had to right build, create through all of your trauma. Anyway, another video on that, but let's wrap this one up. So the mature way, what this whole thing has been about. The mature way to cast out demons we are called to deliverance we are called to do that that is true but how can we do that and stop the once now right clean house right the, the house has been clean the flies are out how do we stop that the demon is not going to leave and bring back and jesus tells us it's going to happen bring back seven more evil more wicked than the original. I, I cannot emphasize enough. You think you're full of love and light and you're some spiritual new age guru going around calling them. You, you'll admit eventually that they're demonic. You'll call them parasites. You'll call them emotional trauma. You'll call them first and second and third chakra. Fill in that blank. And you don't talk a thing about the next seven levels of wickedness. Well, probably because you're just stupid. You're just ignorant. You're just profoundly, uh, uh, what's the word I want, perverted into your new age ideologies. And you've got the gift. Now, I, I, I don't have that gift, but you do. I watched it last night at the backyard bar. I watched that gift, that intellectual gift of Gav. It's quick. It's, it's hard to get a handle on it. <laughs> it's, it to me, it was humorous because the spirit of me could discern it and see past it. But man, I saw the hypnotic trance, the witchcraft and the sorcery that the other unsuspecting souls at the backyard barbecue were tied into. The spy, spider web was thick and they don't know how to get out of it. That was graphene. They were graphite into that sorcery. So first, for me, what I do, and that's all I can tell you, what I have found to be the most mature response to this is the kingdom of God, the wisdom of God. Now, my goal in this entire series was to have given you enough verses on the topic of deliverance ministry through an exegetic study of the Bible. And, you know, Thank you to the sister in Christ who actually did reach out to me with this question that encouraged this now six part video series. I encourage everyone, if you have a topic that you want further study or further clarity on a topic, whether I've already done it or to, you know, throw it into, you know, future 
video studies. Whenever the days are that I can stay awake and do it, I will do it. Just contact me. I'm not hard to find. I'll give you my phone number, 513-680-8810. Text me. Don't try to call me. Usually I don't answer the phone because if I'm not sleeping, I'm studying. The ringer's not on. Text me. Eventually, I'll look at my phone and eventually I will respond. So I'm just going to leave you with a couple of things that crossed my mind uh, as I've been doing this study, as I've been going through scriptures and the concordance and the lexicon. One of the big things I thought about, <laughs> and I, I, you know, when you think about, and I, the only reason I throw this out is because I, I, I threw into this, you know, this part right here, drop to your knees, repent and sin no more. The first thing that came to my mind is Adam, right? Adam in the garden. Adam didn't do a whole series of things, right? It wasn't like he, he was going through the garden, walking and talking with God and kept stumbling and tripping up and having to repent over and over and over. That's not, how, that's not what happened. What happened is Adam only did one thing, one thing. Adam just followed his wife's prompting. That's all Adam did. Eve said, here, I, I, I ate this. Well, have a bite. And that's all Adam did. And look at us, all of humans, all of mankind. <laughs> he only did one thing. God didn't like, you know, put him in time out. He didn't put him in, the, you know, the west corner of the garden and said, you know, think on this. He, he didn't give him a do-over. He didn't even say, repent and sin no more. I, does that strike you? I, I don't know. It strikes me. So I'm going to wrap up. And right now, where I'm at with this entire study is what I encountered at last night's Backyard Barbecue. So I won't be going to any more for a bit of time now. Um, but I hope to get out before I leave. I leave next week to go on a, what I'm calling my last, my last, uh, you know, road trip. And so I won't be doing anything much during that road trip going through the Grand Tetons. But I came home last night and I had a series of very lucid, Holy Spirit was right beside me and taking me through a, an experience that I can only tell you is what is coming. And so the video series, I don't know how long it will be, but the video series next is going to be called the AI Warfare and the Hive Mind. That's what's coming. The warfare on your soul from AI. You're never going to outrun, outbeat, outwit, outthink AI. Only the Holy Spirit can do that. But the AI that's coming and the Hive Mind that you're already securely wrapped up in. If you do not know how to escape what's coming or to think for yourself and to get out of that hive mind that you don't even know you've been graphened into, that black goo, right? The alien black goo is all over you. You've been watching the black goo in all Hollywood movies the last 30 years and all of your music videos the last 30 years. I'm going to wrap up with this. There was a great song that I thought of again while I was uh, listening to the New Age teachers last night at the Backyard Barbecue. Barry Manilow. I write the songs. Pull up on YouTube the lyrics to Barry Manilow. I write the songs and see how deeply Satan is ingrained in our everyday lives. Potter out. Amen.